Praise the Lord. Boy, it's good to be here this morning, and sure is good to see you. Uh, we're going to take our Bibles this morning and turn to two places to begin with. Uh, two places. The first one will be in Exodus, back in the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 3. And then um, uh, when you get that Exodus chapter 3, uh, I want to look at uh, some scripture uh, over in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So to, we'll lay the foundation of what I want to talk about this morning and, and read the scripture here today. Exodus chapter 3 is when God called Moses uh, to preach. The great man Moses, not a meeker man on the earth, great man, great wonderful ministry. 120 years, served the Lord, uh, those uh, 80 of them, and uh, just a miracle, miracle, life of Moses. But I want you to, what I'm going to look at this morning is what God used to get Moses in the ministry. Exodus chapter 3, and uh, we'll look here this morning, and it said, look at verse number 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. That's a weird thing, isn't it? Uh, just a bush, like like this, these flowers right here, but it, it, them's not real. A real bush out there in the backside of the desert. The angel of the Lord is a Old Testament appearance of the Lord himself, the angel of the Lord, and appeared to Moses in that bush and started talking to him. And look at verse 3. And, oh, I'm sorry, 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. Now, over in the New Testament, uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Now, while you're turning to 1 Corinthians, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to preach on this morning. My pastor used to say this. He said, God didn't have to have a special bush to speak to Moses. And my pastor said, any old bush will do. That's the title of the sermon this morning. When you write it down, write it, O-L-E. Any old bush will do. Any old bush will do. God didn't have to have a special bush. God didn't look around and say, well, I've got to have the very best, strongest. But he just figured, I'll take that one right there. That's where Moses is. I'll take it. Any old bush will do. That's what I want to preach. Boy, that ought to be good news for people like us. Amen. The Lord don't have to have nothing special to work through. Don't you let the devil convince you that you're not good enough or smart enough or educated enough or right enough or spiritual enough for God to, to, to use you. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. This is nailed down very, very strong in this chapter. Look at, um, look at verse number 20. Where is the scribe? Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Look at verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. You know that's why educated professors and evolutionists and scientists hate the Bible. Because any common person just down, down the country somewhere can get it and has knowledge beyond theirs. And they just can't stand that. They've been to school and got an IQ of 160 and they've learned all this stuff and they think there's no way some farmer out there in the middle of nowhere is going to know more about and that. But they, God chose it. He did it like that on purpose. That's what he said, to confound the wise. Look at verse number 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many, not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, a few are called, but God, look at verse 27, hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Ain't it the truth? And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught 
things that are. Why does he do that? The next verse. Why does God do it like that? 29. So that no flesh would glory in his presence. That way nobody can't say, buddy, I, I, I got all this ability and I got all this knowledge and I got all this education and therefore I'm speaking for God. No, he's got it fixed. God's got this thing fixed so he can use the very most unlikely people, the very most unlikely things in the most unlikely ways to confound the wise and the mighty. I'm preaching on any old bush will do. It's a characteristic of God to take some small, small, insignificant object, animal, person to do great and important things. It really is. Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod that budded back there in the Old Testament. If you're reading your Bible, you know that story. Um, uh, Dorcas needle. Uh, mentioning that Dorcas had a needle and, and she worked and she would, would, uh, would uh, sew and make things. Just all the way through the Bible. The little boy that had the five loaves. And the fishes. I mean, why didn't why didn't the Lord? You know what people? If people wrote the Bible, they would have said Jesus called all the men together and they made a plan and they sent people down there to get go to a flock and get some sheep and they fed it by them. Nope, nope. He said, I don't have to have that. Get that little boy right over here and bring him over here and I'll take that and bless it and feed the whole multitude. That's what I'm talking about. Any old bush will do. I'll never forget one Sunday. I've told you about this a bunch of times, and it stuck out in my mind. Uh, well, I was I studied all week and I prayed all week, like I have this week, trying to get ready for Sunday. It never ends. You think you don't don't ever think that after you've been doing this uh, 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 forty eight nine thousand years that you would that you would uh, get the hang of it and just jump up here and preach. It's that it's just as much pressure now as it was when I was twenty years old. Uh, to try to get a message from God and try to stand uh, where the Lord had me. So I prayed up and I prayed up. I thought I had the message. I was the downtown reverend. Uh, I mean, it's been 30, 35 years ago. And uh, we had a big crowd of people that morning. And I'll never forget, I was ready to preach. Uh, the choir was ready to sing. And I thought, boy, if I can preach this sermon right, if I can really preach this right, if I can get this done, then God will bless the church. You know, you, you, have, you feel like all the pressure is on you uh, to do what you have to do. And I, that morning, and uh, we stood up for the offering and that big crowd. And there's a little girl that came on one of the buses. She's about 12 years old. And she was sitting right over here on the front and right in this area. And people took to the people gave testimony. And she said, can I say something? And that little girl began to talk. And she just said, I want to thank Jesus for letting me come to church here. And when she started talking, the Holy Ghost come through there. I'm not kidding. It was like a revival hit. People started shouting. People started running. People started saying, "Woo, hallelujah. And you know what? I, I've seen that so many times. The Lord didn't need the downtown reverend uh, to preach that sermon. That the Lord didn't need the choir uh, that morning to, uh, to have everything just right. Uh, no, no. He used a little bus kid, a little insignificant. I didn't know her name. I didn't know her kid's name. The great Wales, revival of Wales back in 1904 uh, in which they said, good night, I don't know, it's like, like 70,000 people were saved. It spread in other countries. One of the greatest revivals uh, in the history of that, that part of the country. In Wales, many, many, many years ago. And I read, I heard where, that that revival started. A teenage girl jumped up and said, I just love Jesus. And the power of God fell in that room. And sparked the great Evan Roberts preach, other preachers preach, but that kid, God, anybody, anybody will do. Now, what I want to try to drive home to y'all this morning is that you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be educated. You don't have to be even, even real smart. You don't have to be uh, Ella, and have nice clothes and, and have a lot of education for God to use you. Any old bush will do. Any of them, that puts me and you and all of us on level ground. It puts us all in a place. You know what God wants from you this morning? I'm going to tell you what God wants from everybody here. He wants you to be willing. He wants you to say, Lord, I ain't much, but what I am, here, it's yours. It's yours. That's what God wants from you. You don't have to try to be somebody else. You don't try to have to act like somebody else, be like somebody else. He wants you to give him everything you've got. 
Never forget, uh, uh, Carrie would remember, I don't know if anybody else in here uh, would or not, when the, the big revival we had many, many years ago over in Bryson City, North Carolina, uh, with a youth camp. Does anybody else in, in that meeting here this morning? Uh, oh, yeah, Terry, maybe maybe Lorraine, we all, uh, the big revival we had in Bryson City. That was one of the biggest revivals I've ever seen in my ministry. It busted loose. It got all over the place. It, that thing, the kids got on fire for God. They come back to church, got up on Wednesday night. I think we come back on Wednesday morning. They got up on Wednesday night and started singing. Everybody in church started just crying, just broke down. The Spirit of God was so thick. I think we had 17 got saved and everybody else got right. There wasn't like 75 of us there. We had a little old bitty camp we'd rented over in Bryson City and, uh, and, it, and it spread like wildfire. People started getting right everywhere. You know how it started that revival? Well, tell you what started that revival. There was a man. Over that that day, and just an uh, insignificant man, never very soft spoken. Nobody, it'd be, you'd never even know he was there. Most people wouldn't even notice it. He'd come to church, sat real quiet, just like that. That man got up and started giving a testimony. And he said, down on the farm where me and mom, I don't remember exactly what he said growing up, you know. And when he was, he was just talking, he wasn't preaching, he wasn't singing, he wasn't screaming and hollering, jumping up and down. Calling fire down heaven. He's just talking. And the Holy Ghost fell again. I'm not kidding. And the power of God fell on that camp. And the Lord moved in that thing. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you people. Sometimes sometimes we're so big we get in God's way. Amen. I mean are, are these singing groups and preachers are, are the world's worst. for that? Oh we're the great so and so. Yeah if the great so and so would, would get out of the way. God might could do something. Amen. You know what all of us in here this morning are? Every one of us. We are all a big blob of sin. We are all needy sinners. We are all just a beggar, begging and needing bread. We're all just people needing help here. That Every one of us. We're all just there. They ain't like some of us have a ride and some of them's way down here and way down here. All God wants is for somebody to just say, Lord, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. God, I'm nothing. It don't matter if nobody, it don't matter if nobody sees me. It don't matter if nobody hears me. It don't matter. All I want is just here I am, Lord. You need somebody. I'm willing to do something for you. That's what God wants from us this morning. Any old bush will do. Anyone. Anyone. I'll never forget. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over. I've been to revivals where they'd have a singing group get up. I'm not against people singing good. I mean, it's nice to hear. Uh, I, mean, I mean, really, you know what I mean, y'all. But I mean, eh, there comes a point when singers, especially when they're really talented and they're all good looking and they're all, you know, and they're smart and they're weird. There comes a point where some of them, they, they cross some kind of, I don't, I, I don't, something goes a little where, where the Lord gets in the back and they're in the front. And right then, when they make a mistake, people brag on them and brag on them and brag on them and brag on them. And you're so great and you're so wonderful. They start believing it. And the next thing you know, it becomes a performance. And it's great. And all the harmony's great. And everything great. But it's like, ugh. Professional singers are, are, the, are, are a perfect example of what I'm, I've seen it over and over and over. There's a group, get up. And I mean, they'd have it all just right. They were all dressed. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not. I don't say it's wrong for them all dressed like that. That's fine. I don't, don't bother me a bit. I think it's nice. Uh, they have everything down pat. Their harmony's right. When that one sings the verse, they all turn toward him. And they're like this, you know. I mean, they got that thing down pat. And I mean, it's just, yeah, well, okay. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's good. It's good. And then I've seen uh, some bunch of little old kids get up. And one of them pick his nose, and the next thing you know, something and the power of God fall out of it. I seen it happen one night because we took the kids over over here in Iceville. And as a man uh, came up to me at church, he said, "I don't understand that." He said, oh, he, he said uh, that group sang, and and that group sang, and, and I mean it was good, and nothing happened. Your group got and started singing, everybody started crying on the altar. That's the difference. That's the difference. That's the difference. I'm not against good singing. I'm not against a good a good. Uh, uh, platform so i please don't get me wrong i think when people get up and they harmonize great and they look good 
Great. Well, I'm all for it. You just got to be real careful that you're not in front and he's in the back. Preaching is the same way. Lord, this bunch of preachers we got now, they want to strut around like a bunch of peacocks, uh, like they're God's gift to the world, and they're the greatest thing that ever I Listen, brother, they ain't no de- They put their shoes on every morning just like you do. I'm telling you, their breath stinks every morning just like yours does. I'm telling you, brother, uh, they have doubts and fears and problems just like you do. The truth is, any old bush will do. Amen? I've heard people say, well, the Lord used... Uh, uh, so and so because he is this and the Lord you now God can use your talent and God can use your personality and God can but you got to get back you got to stay out of the way and because any old bush will do amen we are in a celebrity obsessed mindset in this country I mean, we are taught, little kids are taught, oh, there's so-and-so, there's so-and-so. He plays baseball. He plays basketball. Get your picture made with him. Get your picture made with him. Get your autograph. Get your autograph. And we are, we're teaching our generation to think, these people are great. I'm not against that. I'm not. Kids come up and ask me to sign their Bible. I'm not against getting somebody's autograph. But we, we've, got to, I'm, we've got to get it through our head that they're no different than anybody else. We, we have a celebrity mindset. You put somebody on a stage, you give them a guitar, you get on, and people think, oh my goodness, I got to meet one of the members of the band. I got to meet one of the members. Well, uh, Lord, Lord have mercy. Uh, I mean, and, uh, and we, we can make us a band here if we wanted to. I can make a band. I ain't nothing to it. Uh, I, it there's, it's, it's simple. We, we've got this. And what that has happened is that has bled over into our churches to where we think, That you can't have a revival unless you have the great so-and-so or the wonderful Dr. This or the great mass choir from here or the great uh, singer. I'm not against Dr. So-and-so. I'm not against a big big mass choir. I love it. But I'm telling you this morning, that's not the way the Holy Ghost works. The Holy Ghost has chosen the weak thing, the base thing, the the, the things that are seemingly nothing. Listen, God could use any one of these little boys and girls in here this morning to start to greatest revival that Burke County's ever seen if they just yield themselves to it. Any old bush will do. God wants somebody he can use and just flow through. Elijah's raven. You know Elijah preached a great revival. He's a great preacher and he preached a great revival. And boy, it come back on him. He up and said, ain't going to rain three and a half years. And boy, everything, I mean, it was awful. I, I, and they, they had that old Jezebel or uh, what's her name, they're going to kill him, and going to have him killed. She said, I'll have your head, buddy. He took off running and went out in the desert and just sat down and said, i got to die. I'll just die, Lord. I'll just die. Just kill me. I, I'm, I said, Lord, just kill me. You know that story. And uh, he thought, I'll just starve death out here. And the Lord looked down and he said, uh, hey, and there's a raven there, a raven, a picture of an unclean spirit. And God said, take that preacher something to eat over there. And a raven showed up, come to Elijah, and dropped him some fresh chicken nuggets right there. Anyway, and he said, where'd you get this? You got roadkill somewhere. This has been dead three or four days. But he said, no, it's hot. It's fresh. Where'd you get this? The raven said, I'm. Don't you worry about it. I, the, God told me to bring it. He did, God didn't have to have a special raven. There had millions of ravens. He just went down and said, hey, do this. And he did it. Now, there's where me and you come in. When God looks down and says, hey, that's what you need to be willing to say. Yes, sir, Lord. They'll say, well, I can't do that. I'm, I'm not a, I, I can't. You know what? I, some of y'all I ask y'all to sing in the choir. You want to make me mad? Say this. I can't sing. I didn't ask you that. I've never went up to anybody here and said, can you sing? Being able to sing is not a requirement. Now, it might be in some places. I've heard of some churches where you have to have a place of singing test. Son, we'd have three up here if that was the case. And, and, and the choir leader had to sit down. Uh, but the, look, look, look. Hey, th- this is not spiritual. American Idol TV ruined us. 
It's made us think everything's a performance. Everything, I'm not against it. Please don't take me wrong. I'm not against us having everything. We're having choir practice this evening, 5 o'clock. Everybody be here. I mean, I'm all for it. But for heaven's sake, don't say, I can't say. Hey, don't, in what second worst is saying worse? That's even, that's worse. That's second worst. What do you think I do when I'm hoarse? You think I've not been hoarse in 23 years? Yeah, I have. You think, hey, don't, don't ever say, I got a sore throat. What do you think I do when I got a sore throat? It don't matter. We're not performing. We're up here singing for the Lord. If you can't do nothing but say, If that's all you can do, get up here and do it. For heaven's sake, get up here. What? Hey, I, Lord, take them legs out from under you one of these days. You can walk up them steps with. Hey, I'm telling you, any old bush will do. God's not a talent scout. I'm not, I'm not preaching against organization and singing. Please, please, don't, don't take me wrong, Lord. What's really bad when you ain't got no organization or God? That's rough. When you can't got no talent and no Lord either. But be willing. What about that whale that swallowed Jonah? You ever thought about that? Why does God put stuff like that in the Bible? Backslid preacher. Going, going, going away from God. Went down to Joppa. Went down. Bought him a ticket for a cruise. Went down into the ship. Laid, laid down. In a, he went down, down, down. Down. When you leave the will of God, there ain't but one way to go. That's down. Stuff like that makes me know the Bible's true. Why'd you put stuff like that in there? You go, he, 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 God said, hey, don't you go preach your Bible in Nineveh? He ain't going to do it. Uh, I'm ready to go preach at the big First Baptist Church of Jerusalem. Uh, they'll put me in a motel. They'll buy me a steak. Uh, I ain't going over there to Nineveh. See, there's where he made right there. Listen, you do what God calls you. If God calls you to pastor a church with three people in it, you be willing to do what God wants you to do. Don't think that I'm, I'm too good. I've, I've had people give me, I've had preachers say before, uh, we'd have in the morning service and, 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 and say, well, you preach Thursday morning or something. They'll say, well, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a morning preacher. I say, hey, hey, dude, you ain't no night preacher if you ain't a morning preacher. If you're too good to preach to the bus kids, uh, you're, to, uh, you're not good enough to preach in the pulpit. Amen. You preach back there uh, on a bus, brother. Uh, preach on a bus. Down the hell. I'll do it. I've done it. I'm telling you this, this, this morning, people, we've got to understand. We got Any old bush will do. There is no big shots and little shots in God's work. Everybody in here qualifies for being used of God. All you have to do is surrender. So the Lord says... Uh, uh, I need the wind to blow. Man, that boat started going back and forth like that, and everybody started getting scared. I said, well, we're going to die. We're going to die. Who's that nut laying down there asleep? Hey, get up. Who are you anyway? He goes, oh, Jonah, what about it? We're about to drown, buddy. You better get up and call on your God. Who is your God? The God of Israel made everything. What's your occupation? I'm a preacher. Are you a preacher? What are you doing laying down here asleep? We're all about to die. Pray to your God. He said, I'll tell you the truth. I know why this is happening. Because I ain't right. And God sent this storm. Said, We're all going to die. We're going to throw you overboard. He said, I guess I'm getting what I deserve. So they picked him up. Like like that, like we threw the kids in the pool. <laughs> Grab them like that. One got on that side. And they, oh, one, uh, two. Can you imagine how that looked when he went out there? Oh, boy. Every time I get in the ocean, every time I get in the ocean, I always turn my face out toward the, the water part, not back, but toward the, the land. And I think, what if he's out here? And it's like that on all four sides. Of you. you just fight till you went down. That was it. And he says, this is it. This is it. And about that time, the, the Lord said, now, 10 million whales. And the Lord said, uh, hey, come here a minute. That whale goes, yes, sir. What you need? See, there's the secret right there. There's the secret. And you know, every time God called an animal to do something in the Bible, they did it. They're more obedient than people are because they don't have a sinful nature like we got. They obey God. The rooster, the fish, Balaam's donkey, they obey God. We're the only one dumb enough to think we know better than God 
And we can figure it out there. We're the only species uh, dumb enough to think like that. The elephant said, I mean the elephant. The, the whale said, yes, sir. He said, uh, you hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. I'd like to have a good mess of man. I ain't had none in weeks. Where's the man camp around here? I want husk puppies, tartar sauce. Uh, and, and some French fries, ketchup, uh, iced tea. And the Lord said, point 80 degrees long, longitude, 60 degrees latitude. Go up north, 18 degrees. And he just started swimming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, are, you, are you educated? Well, ain't no different than any of these other whales. It's all right. Any old whale do. I don't need no special whale. I just got a job I need you to do. No spe nothing special. I, like drive a bus. Like teach a class. Like help out in junior church. I, I just got a little something I need you to do. I, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he said, you're hungry. I'm hungry. You're hungry and willing. That's all I need. Go. And he starts swimming. About that time Jonah hits the water. And arms and legs are flying everywhere. And, uh, and, and God says, open your mouth. And the whale goes. And Jonah goes. Whoop. Right down it like that. Everything got pitch black. He felt like he was on a water slide. But it's blubber. I don't know what blubber feels like, but I don't know, want to know either. I like slick guts. And, uh, and he's feeling so sliding down there, and it's dark. And went psh, into a little pool like you do on a water slide. Hit that little pool. Buddy, I'm telling you, whatever lives in the belly of a whale, son, it it, it eat the paint off, 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 uh, off this table right here. Yeah, it's like battery acid. I mean, you ever, you ever eat something and then you spit up? You spit up, you know that taste? Lord have mercy, where does that come from? It comes out of you. You're the sinner. It was, it was chocolate cake when you eat it. And it comes out up like battery acid. That's what a sinner will do to anything. And uh, and you know, that, that what's in a whale's belly? Lord, that, that, that chew up iron. And uh, and, they, and he's down there like that, and he's swimming around in there, and he's blah, 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 blah. And you know, by the time that thing got through with him, three days later, Blah! Nobody can stand the backslid preacher made a whale pew. And Jonah come out on dry ground and started preaching and got the job done. Got you know what? Any old whale do. That whale ain't been to college. That whale didn't live in the nice gated neighborhood in town. That whale didn't drive a Mercedes. I, amen. That whale, it just any whale will do. Get it through your head. Don't you kids sit back and say, well, those kids are nice and they have nice clothes and everything and I just wish I could be like them. No, 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 no. That ain't got nothing to do with it. Your income has nothing to do with it. Please listen to me, boys and girls. Please listen to me, all you young kids in here this morning. God can use you in a mighty way. All you got to do is be willing to let him do that. Be willing. That rooster crowed on Peter. You think that was a special rooster? I don't think so. I don't think the Lord said, went down to the farm and said, uh, a rooster for a very special job. He's, he's got to be perfect. His beak can't have no scratches on it. His feathers can't be all messed up, no wound. He's, he's got to, and, and the farmer go through all of them. And say, oh, the best, here's the best one we got, Lord. This is the strongest, got the most uh, perfect feathers. No, any old rooster do. That ought to give you some hope. It does me. Any old rooster will do. Just that right there. It don't matter. Come here, man. I got a preacher sitting over here who's cussing and out of God's will and mad because Jesus wouldn't let him cut them people's heads off. And he's backslidden over here cussing at a restaurant. And I need to do you, you do me a little favor. The rooster goes walking over there, walk down there. And says, yes, sir. What else do you need me to do? See, animals obey God. People's the only one dumb enough not to. You know why we don't? Because we think we're smarter than he is. You think, well, I know God wants me to do this, but I think, you know, that's your problem right there. You think too much. You'd be better off. Everybody in here be better off just do what it says. No questions asked. Animals do that. And you know what? The, the Lord said, all right, you ready? Get ready. Get ready. Here he comes. Peter comes out of the restaurant. Wiping a mayonnaise off his mouth, slams that, uh, pays his bill, walks out of there, mad as fire. And about that time, the Lord says, Okay. Good job. That's the best I can crow. 
he said, he said, Peter went, oh, man, you wouldn't hurt him no more if you'd have stuck him with a knife. And he cussed him and said, blanket, blanket. I thought we was going to, I thought he was going to set up a kingdom. I thought we was going to throw him from the Roman government. I thought we was going to, uh, uh, blanket. The Lord says, go ahead. And he remembered the word of the Lord. How Jesus said, before the cock crow twice, you'll deny me three times. He said, oh God. Son, it wasn't a D.L. Moody sermon. It wasn't a five point outline. It wasn't a Bible study on getting out of the will of God. He was just any old rooster would do. Have you ever been caught like that? Have you been doing something you shouldn't do or something and the Lord just bang, rebukes you out of the tent? Yeah. Oh, Billy Kelly. Billy Kelly said he, he smoked cigarettes for all his life. And he said when he started preaching, he, he quit. He said, I can't, I'm a preacher. I don't need to be smoking. So he quit smoking. And he said, he'd been preaching two or three years and he went to Florida on vacation. And he said, I'm down here in Florida. I'm just going to light me one up and enjoy it. And so he pulled out a cigarette and went down, and the first person he met was a deacon from his church. <laughs> the Lord will get you like that. He'll get you like that. Just because you cross Florida state line don't make it all right to do what's wrong in North Carolina. And all God's people said, it's getting vacation time, right? And uh, your problem is you just don't want to do what God wants you to do. The Lord said, any old rooster do. And the Bible said old Peter went out and bawled his eyes out. You know why? Any old rooster do. Any old bush will do. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I could talk a lot of stuff about a lot of cases like this in the Bible. I'm going to stop. Maybe there's somebody here this morning that the devil's got you convinced because maybe you've got a past or you've done, you've, you hurt your testimony or you failed or you've, Went through a divorce or you or whatever. Maybe maybe you're here this morning and you just feel like maybe you're second class. Put it that way. That ain't there's no such thing as that in God's book. You're either forgiven or not forgiven. If you're forgiven, you're just as right as anybody else. Amen. Say amen. amen. You say, well, people won't, it don't matter what people think or say. Any old bush will do. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I do believe that there are those here today. And I happen to sing this song a lot because it helps me. Why don't you just make it right this morning? Quit letting your past hold you back. Or your present. And just get in this altar. Something's already coming. And just get down here and say, Lord. If you need me for something, you just holler. I'm signing up. I'm signing up. Here's my hands. Here's my feet. I want to be like that rooster. I want to be like that donkey. I want to be like that fish. I want to be like that, that, that whale. Lord, I just want to give you. That's good. That's good. Come on, y'all. That's great. Young people coming. Mamas and daddies are coming. Get this on and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Hey, hey he ain't going to hurt you, man. Whatever you've got, give it to it. Father, help us this morning. Lord, bless every single person here today to realize any old bush will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing it now. Listen now. Amen. You come get this on.
me give myself away. Use my hands, use my feet. All I have is yours complete. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't go back. I can live for you today. There are so many things I wish I could do. You don't know better than God. You're not smarter than God. Say, Lord, here I am. Use me, Lord. Here I am. Use me, Lord. Help me. If I was just to show, I think I'd hear everyone. But you can't refill the hourglass of time. So here I am, use me, Lord. Give me words to sing and say. Let me love, let me live, let me give myself away. All I have is yours complete. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't go back, but I can live for you today. Don't ever forget me telling you this. God... He's not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability. It's not like the world. The one with the best looks. The one with the most talent. The one with the best gets the position. That's not the way God works. He uses the weak things. The base things. To confound the mighty. That's why I said it's harder for a rich man to hear a camel go through the eye of needles than for a rich man to go to heaven. You know why? Because they trust in it. They, they, it's hard for them to just give it all to God hard for them, almost impossible and the Lord's got it fixed like that amen alright thank you alright a couple things right quick and we're going to go uh, don't forget now tonight tonight's important service be here pack the place out choir practice at 5 o'clock if you're in the choir or used to be and should be in the choir at 5 o'clock this evening church at 6 then uh, Next Sunday morning, invite all your friends. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach on, I, I think the title will be probably, It Ain't Coming, It's Here. It ain't coming, it's here. People say, well, bad times are coming. Bad times are here. I, I'll be saying, we're now in what they call Pride Month. You want me to tell you what the Bible says about that? Not just the sin. You want me to tell you what the Bible says about that? The Bible says pride goes before destruction. That's what it says. Pride goes before destruction. God's going to destroy this whole mess. Pride goes before destruction. I didn't write that. The Bible said a proud look was the first thing on the list that God hates. I'm telling you, we, it ain't coming. It's here. Uh, the merging of technology and, and human flesh is gone out the roof. The Great Reset, that Klaus Schwab and that German genius wrote that book on. I, tell, I told you all that from day one. When the coronavirus first came out, I got up here and I said, something stinks here, y'all. And they have now admitted it that they all got together and said, now's our chance to reset the world. And they've done it. They are doing it. They're doing it. Everything's changing. Everything's changing. It's a downhill from here on. And so we'll be dealing with a lot of that next Sunday morning. Bring your family. Bring your friends. Bring your neighbors. Bring all your kids. Bring your mom and dad. Next Sunday morning, we're playing a big day. Why do I do this? Because big days get people in church that wouldn't normally come. And sometimes the Lord get a hold of their heart and they'll get saved and stick. We've got people coming to your church right now that came because of big days. Darren there. Uh, big day, uh, others that come on a big day and stuck. So that's why we're doing it. Get the truth out. All right, we'll be dismissed. Don't choir practice five church at six tonight. Come pray him. Bring somebody with you, brother Eric.
Don't you dismiss in prayer, brother. Everybody fellowship before you go.